About two years ago, I was driving home from a family reunion, pretty late at night, and the drive was about two hours. I didn't stay the night because I had to be back for work the following day. Most of the drive was on roads with dense bushes and trees on either side, the really creepy ones you see a lot in movies. Anyway, I had been driving about 45 minutes and I was starting to get really tired. You know how sometimes you just suddenly become really tired out of nowhere? Well, yeah, that happened to me. I knew I wasn't going to last, but I didn't come across any place that I felt I could park and safely sleep. Anyway, after it became clear to me that I wasn't going to find a place to pull over and my tiredness wasn't going away, I did something very questionable. I pulled over to the side of the road onto the grass behind some bushes to try and hide my car from anybody else who was going to come past. The roads weren't empty and I came across another car every few minutes or so and made a mental note that the time was 11.22 and then fell asleep. Sometime later, I was awoken by a scratching sound. I looked at the clock 11.50. The sound stopped after a few seconds, and because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around and simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same sound, and it was now 12.40. This time, it was really freaking me out, because the sound didn't stop. The thought ran across my mind that it was just an animal inspecting the car. But why would it return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in my rearview mirror and just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. Now, at that time, I thought it was the damn hook killer. You know, the one that scratched the couple's car and then slaughtered the guy when he got out to investigate? Fuck that, I thought to myself. So I got the hell out of there. There was a bend no more than a hundred yards up the road. And as I came around it, there was a fucking car parked off to the side of the road with the driver's side door open. I slowed down just to look to see if anyone was in there. There wasn't. Then I looked in my rear view mirror. I didn't see anything and all of a sudden this guy comes sprinting around the corner. He starts screaming at me, shouting stuff like, Hey! Hey you! Get the fuck out of your car! Now! I noped the fuck out of there and sped off. I never saw the guy again. Moral of the story, don't fucking sleep on the side of a deserted road. I posted this just a couple of days ago on another thread. This isn't very interesting, but I woke up with blood gushing down my cheek when I was younger. I didn't feel anything, but my face felt wet, so I went down to my parents' bedroom and they started freaking out. To this day, we still have no clue what cut my face but I needed eight stitches next to my eye. We checked the sheets, pillows, pillowcases, edges of the bed, etc. We still have no idea what did that. I had awesome parents who let me sleep in the living room on weekend nights when I was very young because my sister was a light sleeper and I could stay up until dawn. But of course, I always ended up sleeping on the couch because Nick at night made me tired. So one night I woke up to the prickly feeling, like instinct, just bolted into a sitting position and stared out the front window. We lived in rural Georgia, so you can imagine the multitude of trees. 
imperfect light cast from the moon. I see a silhouette of someone in this fucking tree. The family dog dashes to the window and is snarling into the glass. Terrified, I ran into my parents' room and try to explain to my parents that there was a strange person outside. Dad grabs something defensive and darts outside with the dogs to beat the wax off the hothead. I tremble in Mama's arms until Dad comes home and says he saw no one and to go to bed. I decided to sleep in my regular bedroom. I fill in my sister as to what happened. Dad is making regular rounds in the house with a cup of coffee. We're all still and I finally think I can sleep. Nope. I notice the man outside my window. From what I can see in the moonlight, he gives me the shh signal and runs away. I swear I couldn't, I swear I couldn't stop crying for what felt like hours. My house sits farther back in the lot than most other houses. It is a strange layout as well. The sidewalk runs the length of the living room and ends at the front porch, which lets into the living room. Large windows that do not open allow great light to get into the living room, but at the cost of no privacy. The rest of my family was on vacation and having the house to myself I decided I would get smashed. Well, I passed out on the couch in the living room at about nine when I realized I was too scared to walk back to my room. The couch is right underneath these big windows. I woke up suddenly, not knowing why. I had a severe case of the chills and I could not figure out why. Then the banging started. It came from right above me. I did not move but I opened my eyes and looked up at the window. Someone was standing there, pounding on the glass. Without moving, I looked at the cable box. It was around three in the morning. The banging continues. Then it stopped suddenly, but I still did not move. Suddenly it commences again, coming from two different directions now. Someone is banging on the window and another person is banging on the front door. They kept doing it and would not go away. Finally, after about 40 minutes, they quit. It was the most terrifying event I could recall at the moment. It made me a nervous wreck after that. I called a friend the next day to see if he would come over and stay for the rest of the week, and his response was this. What the fuck for? So that we both can be murdered in our sleep? Thanks a lot, asshole. I was 17 and had just gotten my license. Back in high school, my friends and I made it a mission to find abandoned houses to throw parties in. We had a few good candidates but the motherload was this house I would pass on my way home from work. It was an undeveloped shell of a large house with a huge property in the back. I had told one of my friends about it, and one day before we went to see a movie, I took him to the house. It was about dusk in summer, so I had my headlights on. I pulled into the front of the house, and we were there for like 10 seconds top before we pulled back out to the main road. A minute later, this big truck pulls up behind us with its high beams on, riding our asses. My friend and I took a note of it, but paid it no mind as we headed towards the main road. At the light, I turned right, but the truck cut through the gas station at the corner and blocked us off. Out of the truck comes this big hulk of a man, and my friend and I are shitting our pants. He raps on the window and I roll it down. Now, the really freaky part is that this is a busy road, and now there was no one in sight. He asks us what we were doing at the house, 
and I quickly lied and said we were making a U-turn. He stares at us for a few seconds, smiles, and sends us on our way. To this day, the house remains unfinished, and I'm convinced it's a drug operation of some sort. Moral of the story? Don't go into abandoned houses. When I was maybe 10 or 11, I was homesick from school, and I was on the couch watching TV when the doorbell rang. It was the mailman who told me that we had gotten a package, but it was so big that he needed help carrying it in. I wasn't that old, but I knew right away something was wrong. I asked him where his truck was because I didn't see it parked out front. He kept telling me it was around the corner. I asked him why the regular mailman who always brought us lollipops wasn't here and I was told he was visiting family. He kept telling me to open the front door, but I politely told him that I wasn't feeling well and that I wasn't allowed to leave the house. I told him we would pick up the box from the post office and he was telling me how much of a hassle that would be and how my mom would want me to do her this favor. I told him that I would come outside, but I had to get my shoes from upstairs first. I closed the front door and locked it. Then I ran through the house and locked the back door and called my neighbor who worked from home. She was a close family friend and I caught her up screaming into the phone that she had to come over right away. Then I stood at the locked front door and stared at the man through the window. He saw me staring and yelled through the door asking if I found my shoes. So I yelled to him that I called my neighbor to help carry it because she was older and stronger. He just turned around and ran away. They never managed to catch him. I always wondered if he ever managed to trick some other kid. When I was about 12, I had a lot of issues with night terrors and rarely slept a whole lot through the night. One night, I got up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom. I sat down half asleep and thinking of nothing but emptying my bladder and got back to bed when I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. There was a man standing by the other door to the bathroom, staring at me, not moving. He was wearing a tattered gray jumpsuit and had a crutch, little to no hair. I don't remember how I got down into the basement where my parents slept, but suddenly there I was hysterical. My dad finally went up and looked around in the kitchen and the bathroom. He saw nothing but allowed me to sleep on the couch down where they were. I didn't fall back asleep. About an hour or so later, I heard the sliding door to my bathroom from my sister's room and limping footsteps. The next morning, my dad searched around and noticed that the fridge and pantry had been raided. They never caught the guy. A friend of my sister's had been taking sleeping pills because she was stressed out about the HSCs, which is the Australian version of the SATs, and wasn't getting much sleep. The problem was they were giving her weird night terrors. I don't know why this didn't make her stop taking them, but whatever. Anyway, one night, she thought she heard breathing under her bed, so she looked and saw a large bearded man in dirty clothes under there. She screamed and ran to her parents' room, but her parents dismissed it as just being the pills. She was semi-convinced of the same thing, so she went back to bed and forced herself not to check under the bed again. The next morning, they woke up. The next morning, they woke up and the entire bottom floor of the house was a mess and a bunch of stuff was stolen. I was driving home through back roads I had never been on and came across a bookstore in a tiny town in the woods. The bookstore was actually a house where the front of the house had been converted into a store. There was a box on the porch that said 50 cent books 
so I stopped to see if there were any Stephen King books in there. A middle-aged woman comes out with a huge smile and gives me a bowl of fruit and some tea. I'm like, this place is awesome, and rifle through books while eating fruit and downing the tea. Inside the store slash home, there were a lot of cool art books and stuff, so I spent more time in there. She brought me more tea. Even when I said, no thank you, that's plenty, she kept refilling. Gave me dessert too, brownies and cookies. I didn't realize it at the time, but she was drugging me. It's hazy to remember the details. At some point, she closed the shop, telling me to take my time looking at the books. She told me that she was going to go and take a shower and was gone for a while. When I was ready to pay, I had to wander back through her house to find her. I found her in her bedroom. She was in her bed. I'm pretty sure she was naked. At the time, I thought, weird, she's watching an exercise video in bed, but later realized she was watching porn. You might think this is hot, but it wasn't. She was my mom's age and had been telling me how she reminded me of her kids in college. So not hot. I told her I was ready to pay and she told me how to open the register. So I went and opened it, put in what I owed, took out the change and left. When I stumbled outside, a fire engine drove by, screaming with sirens. In the distance was the glow of a big forest fire and the stars were being covered by smoke. A tall man on a horse watched the fire truck pass. He looked right at me, took a piece of wood or something out of his mouth, and said, Town's burning. I swear to God, I have a crystal clear memory of this happening, even though I'm sure it couldn't have. By this point, I guess I was seriously tripping balls on something. I'm not a drug guy, so I don't know what I had, but I was out of my mind and I could hardly walk. I got to my car and drove home along twisting roads on tall cliffs above the ocean. Twice, I realized I was on the wrong side of the road. One of the times I realized this because a massive truck was heading straight for me laying on his horn and flashing its lights. I kept thinking about how my car could be like an airplane and a submarine if I drove it off the cliff. I can't believe I made it home alive. Later, I realized I was in that house for about four hours looking at books. At least, that's what I hoped to hell I was doing. Thank you for watching. I always appreciate the support you show me and I'm forever grateful for it. Hope everyone had a wonderful day. All my social media information is in the description box below. All the story, music, and image information is below as well. And don't forget,